This is Selma Schimmel at the Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress 2011 in Stockholm. Professor Adizio, this morning here in Stockholm, you gave a teaching lecture on breast cancer and the elderly and the different treatment modalities. So let's start by asking what age group is actually considered the elderly when you're talking about breast cancer? This very much varies according to geographical distribution and uh, cultural background. Um, I think that uh, it is kind of obsolete uh, to um, revolve around uh, a clear anagraphic uh, uh, age. I think we need today, we need to accept the idea that we definitely need to talk frailty. Frail individuals, um, not fit for standard treatment, uh, entails uh, uh, careful, um, screening for uh, frailty and uh, um, we shall just move one step forward from the 70, 75 years which is the standard age cut that the literature puts. There's this perception that after a certain age you're too old for cancer treatment. That That's really not so, is it? It definitely is not. Uh, um, again, this is a, a misconception that we have by far um, passed and left behind. Um, there, are, um, ev there is redundant evidence that uh, older individuals can and should be uh, offered uh, um, standard treatment uh, and tailored treatment uh, is an even better option uh, in view of a better understanding of their comorbidities, associated medical condition, frailty, in order to uh, optimize the treatment planning. Would you be able to give us an example of the significant treatment differences between the elderly and the younger breast cancer patient? You need to uh, c consider the uh, quality of life that in the, every single individual is, is facing. Um, lack of mobility, bound on a wheelchair, would possibly discourage from um, tamoxifen and would possibly privilege aromatase inhibitors. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a patient with severe arthritis of the generative um, bone condition would, um, would probably benefit of tamoxifen rather than aromatase inhibitors. So it's very much a, a careful um, balancing of uh, side effects and advantages. So Professor Adizio, we've just talked about arthritis. I would imagine patients with issues related to cardiovascular concerns in that area, that could impact the breast cancer treatment. For sure. Um, medications that are often utilized um, might bear uh, cardiotoxic risk. And particularly, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that as a surgical oncologist myself, surgery is the best treatment option. Uh, and surgery is sometimes neglected in view of uh, cardiac failure. So it is important to better understand what the um, cardiac uh, performance is in order to avoid neglecting uh, surgery. Do you ever have issues with the children of um, their elderly parents that are resistant, saying, no, 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 I don't, I don't want my my mother to go through anything like that. Yeah. We do have this uh, situation. Um, I must say that it's an interesting one because sometimes it's more difficult to reassure the relatives, uh, the, the beloved ones, uh, rather than the patient herself. Uh, most of the time, you wouldn't be surprised to know that elderly women are quite brave. They have seen their friends, uh, next door neighbors, sailing through surgical procedure, they had the, the lump taken, and they're quite adamant in having active treatment. Well, speaking of active treatment, you know, chemotherapy is hard on a young person. It, how, how do the elderly handle chemotherapy, and is the dosing different when a patient gets older? Chemotherapy is uh, by far less uh, administered in the older group of patients uh, uh, for a number of reasons. But certainly um, it is interesting to uh, consider uh, active medical treatment uh, and including chemotherapy even in the older uh, age group. Uh, the association of uh, um, 
chemotherapeutic compound. Taxanes uh, is probably better than a single um, drug. Um, Herceptin in her to positive lady with no major cardiovascular toxicity is also uh, an option. Um, and there are several new compounds that are worth uh, um, taking into consideration. Slight increase in head and foot syndrome, slight increase in hypertension according to the drugs that have been in, utilized, but definitely n not to neglect active treatment just for anagraphical age. A, a curious question, while you would look of, if a patient is a young adult and gets diagnosed with breast cancer, you may wonder, oh, perhaps they're BRCA positive. Would you test an older woman who may have uh, children to be concerned about, or because they're diagnosed when they're much older, it would be irrelevant? No, the issue here is an older lady, a senior patient uh, with uh, detected breast cancer, you would like to know whether her uh, profile uh, fits uh, with the one that is passed over to the uh, sibling, so it's just double checking and cross matching. So as a surgical oncologist, what are the recommendations that you would have for a newly diagnosed older breast cancer patient? First of all, inform the patient in a positive way. Um, there is a problem, but the problem can be fixed. Most of the time it's fixable. Um, surgery is the best option. Remove it, not necessarily with an aggressive surgical treatment, mastectomy is not necessarily required. Um, breast conservation is advisable. We are now starting to talk uh, reconstruction because older people might often require a decent cosmetic uh, uh, reconstruction. They have uh, excellent quality of life. Life expectancy for a 70-year-old lady in the UK and in the US averages uh, 15 to 18 years. So these is ladies that they go dancing, they go swimming, they have an active life, and they deserve the most uh, appropriate treatment. I'm so glad you said that because one of the issues I've heard from older breast cancer patients is a doctor saying to them, you know what, you don't need your breasts anyways at your age. And that is so devastating and hurtful. Mm -hmm. And so to hear you reinforce the fact that how one feels about themselves, how one looks, that that is an important aspect of quality of life. I have more than one patient in their 80s. They go dancing, they go swimming, they got new boyfriends, and they are interested in having a very decent uh, uh, cosmetic result. See, that's your Italian roots. All right, let me, I'm curious to know what prompted you to study in particular breast cancer in the elderly patient population? Uh, it's a long story, but to cut it short, uh, I felt that uh, we can improve uh, cancer survival, uh, looking high dose, low dose, uh, new medications, but uh, the real bulk uh, of the survival gain that we can easily offer to our population is by looking at a badly neglected uh, subsetting and uh, this is older patients. So I, breast is, is what I'm dealing with, but uh, in my career I went through colorectal and liver, and there is large evidence that this group of patients is neglected and we can do much better. It's really rewarding. I think what you're doing is so significant, and we're all going to get older. Hopefully we live so long, and the fact that you're reaching out and focusing attention in an area that many physicians may take less of an interest in, I think really distinguishes you. So let me ask, how does it feel tomorrow you're receiving the 2011 ESMO Award from the European Society of Surgical Oncologists, and what does it feel like for you to receive this honor? I'm really, really honored. I never thought of, I never expect anything like this. Uh, I take it not as a personal um, gift, but uh, as, as, a, as a sign of uh, uh, a significant sign of uh, um, gratitude to what uh, the medical community has been contributing in the right track and, uh, and it's uh, a teamwork. Uh, it's medical oncology, surgeons, anesthetists, geriatrician, uh, research, nurses, uh, so it's really an interesting era of research. 
So for some of the younger oncologists that may be viewing you right now and hearing you speak, what message do you want to give to them? What can you give us a teachable moment? It is important to master guidelines and standards of care, but you need to move one step forward and understand patients' needs, targets, and offer tailored treatment. A vulnerable individual requires special attention, special empathy. Uh, just make sure that you get it right and you deliver what these patients uh, are asking for. Well, I wish to thank you for what you're doing. I think that it shows sensitivity, compassion, and you, you used a very important word, empathy. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Professor Dr. Ricardo Adizio. Thank you.